Yeah, so we are discussing finite state machines and uh, there are two kinds of machines we discussed. One is the finite state automata. Finite state automata will just be accepting or rejecting the input. So input is there, it is either accepted or not accepted. Like this uh, uh, automata is accepting different uh, uh, sequences of words. So I is one word, will is another word, am is another word, was is another word. It is accepting these words uh, and it, it is basically accepting or rejecting the sequence of words. The sequence I am eating is accepted, but uh, they are eating is not accepted because they is not here or they will eat or they eat. Nothing is accepted. Only these three strings or three, these three sentences will be accepted. And then we saw finite state transducers. The transducers uh, not only accept, but they also output something. So the input uh, uh, is transduced to some output thing. So let's say this is an FST. Some input is there and there is also some output. The FSA will, uh, okay, you can, so the equivalence you can use is NFS, NFST accepts something and uh, uh, outputs something else, uh, but an FSA is accepting the same thing and outputting the same thing. Let us say, you can say FSA is like an FST with same input and output. That is a general, uh, So if I have an FST, which has some input and the same thing is the output, then it, it can be called as an FSA, right? Okay, so this is the way uh, FST is not only accepting, but also is giving some output. Then we saw deterministic and non-deterministic FST. So with that background, let's now today discuss what are the different uses or different operations possible on finite state transducers or finite state automata? So the topic is operations on FSM, finite state machines. Okay, so let's discuss. Uh, there are different kinds of operations possible. For example, you may have uh, uh, you may have union, uh, concatenation, closure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's discuss one by one. So first kind of operations we will call as combining. different kinds of combinations are possible. For example, let's say first we will discuss union. So what is union? So let us say, uh, let us say A comma B are two FSA, finite state automata, and X is any string. Right, then uh, uh, when do we say, so X is accepted by A union B, if and only if, oh, I, I'm sorry, I should have done it with, white pen. If and only if, uh, uh, if and only if X is accepted by A or X is accepted by B. Right? So an example could be, let us say if I have a a uh, finite state X, uh, automaton. It's a initial state. So the I 
am going and then the final state this is an our a and b is uh we are going right so what will be a union b so this is accepting i am going this is accepting we are going a union b will accept both these sentences right means my x is i am going that is also accepted if my x is we are going that is also accepted so basically x is accepted uh, uh by either a or b then except x is accepted by a union b right so what will be my uh a union b how will it look like it will look like this an initial state i um going or v are going right simple but then uh, a simpler way would be uh, implementation wise implementation wise a simpler way would be i will simply say uh, this is also a union b simply say from here i will create a connection here and then this is no longer a a thick uh, initial state but it's just a normal state what is the advantage that with only one operation by just creating an epsilon arc or an empty arc i am able to achieve a union b now imagine if you have millions of sentences which you want to uh, concatenate or which you want to uh, do a union upon right then if you have to do this way then you have to create these new arcs million times or new uh, fsas million times but now if you just do a this connection one connection per fsa <laughs> so that means you will be uh, just needing a million simple operations so this for computational efficiency computational computationally efficient right so this is the thing okay so this is about union now let's come to uh another operation it's called concatenation uh, okay concatenation is another operation what does that mean it means if s if x is accepted by a and y is accepted by b of course x and y are the strings and a and b are our fs is then then xy is accepted by a b and this is the concatenation right so an example could be if i say i if i say uh, this is the initial state let us say i am or i say v r right then these fsa is are except this fsa let's say this is a fsa it is accepting two strings one string is i am another string string is v r 
and there is another fsa called b which accepts going or staying something so now when you say a concatenated with b it will accept the string i am going i am staying we are going we are staying like lots of combinations right so you can simply concatenate ab how will that look like ab how will this look like same thing i have to just create an epsilon arc or an epsilon transition let me just copy it here oops what is this Uh, copy it here, and similarly, I copy this one. Right, just that now I have to add an empty arc here. Right. Now I have to notice that this is no longer the final state. And this is no longer the initial state. These are just intermediate states. That's it. By adding an epsilon arc, I can convert. So basically, this all these operations are given to you in OpenFST library. In OpenFST library, all these operations are inbuilt. You just have to call a command FST concatenate or FST union, and it will. automatically operate upon your given a b uh, fsts or fsas and then you get your answer you get your concatenated or union um, fst so this was about concatenation now another operation could be epsilon removal so you have got epsilon transitions which are basically null transitions and you don't need them so what you can instead do uh you will simply uh when you when you run epsilon epsilon re removal on this particular fsa it will be converted into another fsa which has no epsilon transitions so the resulting fsa will have no epsilon transition now imagine if i have something like this uh i epsilon 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 um going this is the initial state this is the final state now if i run it if you run it through epsilon removal what will happen all the epsilon states will be removed all the epsilon arcs will be removed and i will get simply i am going let's say simple so it turns out that this epsilon removal is uh, very easy for fsas but for fsts it might be very complicated or in some cases it might not be possible also because uh in fs uh, t's you can have input as well as output you want to remove let's say epsilon from the inputs then uh, what do you do with those outputs you have to uh, intelligently disperse them so that uh, your mapping is not disturbed so in some cases epsilon removal may not be possible for fs t's okay now let's come come to the next uh, operation it's called a closure closure is okay if you have studied uh what is it called the if you have studied regex regular expressions what do you find sometimes you will find there uh let me let's say some string like oh you can have a any number of times then b then c um at least one time then d then e right this is a regular expression this is a 
regular expression uh, which you can implement in your uh, python etc you write you have these regular expressions so what do, why do you use it you use it for to find out uh, uh, to or to match strings which have a uh, certain given format like this okay i will ask you question any uh, application of regex which you have seen before any application of regex that you have seen before chat window yes any application of regex Sir, in pre-processing during NLP. Yeah, in NLP you will see it a lot. Yes, in NLP you see it a lot. Uh, for example, when you are reading from <clears throat> uh, a text file. Um, okay, something like this. So you see. Um, so you 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 will say. Okay, I can have uh, uh, somebody's name is there. Let's say somebody's name is um, somebody's name is. Give me an example. Uh, somebody's name is Hari. Let us say you will say his name is Hari. You can spell it like this, or you can spell it like this, or you can spell it like this. Right. but um like that so uh, so you you can see that you can use okay i can have either h or h followed by an a followed by an r followed by either i or double e something like this right so this is an example of regex similarly you can have phone numbers you will say uh, i can have uh, any digit uh any digit which is repeated 10 times or maybe if you are doing only numbers any digit repeated any number of times or any digit repeated at least one time like all these regex we see in text processing a lot okay so uh, similarly here we have uh, we can have regular expressions like this you can have uh, let's say i want to uh, i have an a which is this oh let me first tell uh, what is a star the meaning of a star is that a is repeated oh let, let, this is not an fst this is a let us say a token a single token so let me represent it with a small a a star means a is repeated zero or more times right let us say now a plus which means a is repeated one or more times so these are the two symbols mm, okay can you give an example from asr since you are studying asr where you will need where you may need this in asr where where will you need it so for example you are speaking something when i say hari or i say hari then how long i make my e sound that is not uh, there is no constraint over that right i may say hari like i can sing it like that so uh, so there you can use a star operation or a plus operation saying that at least once that frame will be will be seen or detected and it can be repeated multiple times right in uh, your uh, hmms or in your uh, when you are converting your input frames into output states then states can be repeated multiple times 
similarly silence could be uh multiple time for example i uh, i have to speak one word and i say after the pause i will say i am going or i can say i am going so there is no pause in between the silence is in the second case silence was not there in the first case silence was there for considerable time so you will just say silence star basically it can be there it may not be there does not affect your output your uh, uh, sentence is still accepted right okay then let's see some examples of uh, closure uh, let us say you have an fst like this initial state and then you have an a final state or you have a b final state right this fst accepts this fsa accepts only two strings either a or b now let us i let us say i want to accept uh a b a b a a b b like means multiple times means this i have to make this uh you can say uh, let us say this is a union b right a was just accepting a b was just accepting b a new a union b is accepting both a and b now what will be my a union b plus how will this look like how will this look like so basically you will say this is my initial state and a and i reach the final state or it is possible that a a can repeat also so i will come back here with an epsilon transition and then similarly b come back with an epsilon transition right so this will be a union b plus now tell me what all strings are accepted by a union b plus like this one accepts only a and b but this one accepts what it accepts a, a. it accepts a a a b a b a b a b a b b a a all these strings b b b like all these strings are accepted right right uh, but the null is not accepted like uh, means uh, it is plus means at least once you must see either a or b or a etc okay so this was a union b plus now how will the a union b star look like which means even null or when when there is no input even that is acceptable star means zero or more times right when my a is repeated zero or more times how will this look like so you can say this moves to so this this uh same thing this the same thing b and a blank uh just a moment i have to pause for a bit just give me uh 2 minutes i will resume in a moment thank you yeah so what we are doing is a union b a uh, whole star it means it can accept it can accept uh a blank also like a and b may appear or they may not appear even not appearing is also an acceptable thing so that's what you do two ways of representing it one is that you uh make an an epsilon transition to the state and this state is also a final state or you can also simply say my initial state uh could also be my final state right so this is my it's a way of representing that this is my initial state but this also can be my final state basically i am not 
having any input, even that is an acceptable thing. So here in the examples, a blank will also be included in, in addition to all those other things like A, B, A, B, et cetera. So, so now you see the power of uh, this representation that it can be used to model uh, languages or grammars. Grammar means basically syntax. So you uh, like you know in uh, languages you can construct animals. So, so, so it construct sentences like um, I think I I think I can think I think I think I can think <laughs> or, or I think I think. I think, I think, I think, I means you can, uh, or uh, he was going and going and going. He was going and going and going and going and going and going. You can repeat it over and over. So you, now you can use FSTs to uh, represent those uh, languages or grammars, right? And this A union B star, this, this represents one kind of grammar uh, or it accepts some format of strings. So interesting. So you can see that now the uh, power of FSTs or the uh, utility of FSTs is becoming more and more clear. So, okay, now we discussed uh, closure. Let's move on. Uh, now we will discuss next operation, which is possible. It is called intersection. I think union, if you understand union, then intersection is also very similar, right? So you have uh, intersection means if, a, if X is accepted by A, and X is also accepted by B, and then X is accepted by A intersection B. In union, there was an or here, but here you have an and, right? So it has to be accepted by both A and B in order to say that it is accepted by A intersection B. An example could be, uh, for example, you have, uh, you have, uh, what to say, you have numbers, real uh, integers, uh, let's say whole numbers, you can say whole numbers, which are essentially positive integers, right? So what are those? They are one, two, three, four, Uh, initial state, and then you have final state, and it accepts all the numbers like one, two, three, four, five, etc. So let us only <laughs> draw up to this much. Let us call this as a, as a FST or FSA called A. Another FSA B, it accepts, let's say the even numbers, right? What does that mean? It will be accepting. Yes, please. Two, four, six, six eight, so now what will be my A union B? Or let us say this, let us keep it finite only uh, to avoid any confusion. So what will be my A union B? Union B. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I should have said intersection B. What is my A intersection B? Two and four. Yes, only two and four. Right. So this is accepted by only this. This is accepted by my uh, uh, 
I mean, only two and four are accepted by this uh, FSA. Right. So this was about um, this was about uh, intersection. Now, okay. Um, now, okay. Let us look at what, what is the power of whatever operations we have seen. You can use them to model very complicated phenomena as well. For example, imagine you have one grammar in which I'm just giving an example now. An example is you have one grammar, let us say A plus B star C D E star. It's a very complicated grammar, it means it will have some FST. Let us draw it. How will it look like? My initial state. Then A plus. What does that mean? I have to have at least one A. Or I can have also multiple A's. Okay. A and at least one A. And then I go to my next state. Now B star, it means I should have B, but I may not have B also. I may directly go to C. C will appear only once and it has to appear only once. D has to appear once. And E can again appear multiple number of times. Uh, right? This FST will represent this grammar. Now let us say we have another constraint. Another con this is this is yeah. another constraint is that uh, each vowel should appear each vowel can appear or uh, vowel should appear at least twice. So which means if each vowel, if at all, means if, if it is appearing, then it should appear at least twice or it, it may not appear, right? If it is appearing, then it should appear at least twice or it may not appear. Like if you are having uh, A, then it should be AA, then B may not appear. Or if B is appearing, then it should be BB or BBB or BBBB like that. But it cannot be only single B. It cannot appear single time then C, D, and then it may end. And if E is appearing, it should appear double E or three times E or four times E, but single E is not allowed, right? This is another constraint. So it will have some uh, FSTs. Let us try to draw that. This is my initial state. And uh, I can have an A appearing twice. A and A. And A can appear also multiple times. So I will put a self loop that this it can appear three times, four times, five times, any number of times. B can appear, B can appear only uh, any number of times, right? B. C can appear any number of times. D can appear any number of times. And but E is a vowel again, so E will appear just like we did for A. Right, so you can see it's a fairly complicated FST. Right, and I now I want to now I want to uh, concatenate or no, I'm sorry, I'm, I take one take one intersection how will this look like so i can give you as an exercise you can try to draw it or you can also use the toolkit which i showed you yesterday in the last class you can use open fst toolkit and if you see you will see in open fst toolkit it is so easy that this whole operation which looks very complicated here it will be very easy there so that will be an exercise for you okay let's come to the next operation now uh, Okay, I think I have a question for you. 
So given whatever we have studied, I'll try to answer this question. I have an FSA A, right? Um, how will you implement, like I'm asking you an implementation question, which, which means if I ask you use open FST toolkit, how to check if X is accepted by A. You have the FST toolkit. You can implement A, right? I have shown you in the last discussion how to implement A on the open FST toolkit. It's a very simple thing. You just define all the arcs and uh, your output state can be same as the input state. Basically, I have told you how to how to implement an FSA using an FST, right? I hope you remember in the today today's class only we discussed that how to implement an FSA you FS uh, A using an FST. The answer is yes. So an FSA is like an FST with same input and output. So now my question is, okay. How will you check in the open FST toolkit if X is accepted by A? So the answer is you can use the operations which we have just seen before. So step one is construct an FSA B which accepts only X. Right? So let us say X is a sentence I am going. Just construct an FST, an FSA I am going. Right? This is your B, a new FSA which accepts only X. Now, second is take union, uh, take intersection. But three, oh, okay, let's merge the two steps. Check if it is empty, right? If it is empty, this means A intersection B is empty, which means X is not accepted by B, by A, right? And if it is not empty, then it is uh, clear that or basically there are two possibilities, right? Either this will be equal to B or this will be equal to empty, right? Because B has only one string which is acceptable. So, so this A intersection B will be either empty or it will be equal to B. So you just check if it is empty or not. If it is empty, then this means X is not accepted by A. And if it is not empty, uh, then this means X is accepted by A. That's it, so very simple. So now you can use your open FST toolkit to do various interesting things, right? You can create these complicated FSTs and merge them, concatenate them, or uh, uh, what do you say? Yeah, intersect them or union them. And then you do uh, to check them or to be able to use them, construct a B simply with one sentence and then just take the intersection and check if it's empty or not, right? So it's very uh, interesting exercise. Uh, let's now go to the next uh, operation. It's very simple and we will stop after this. It's called determination and minimization. We have discussed this determination last time, but I will just again So what do they mean? Uh, they mean that, what is determination? Determination Determination means from a particular state, if you are receiving an input, then it has only single path, right? Single path means single, what do you say? Yeah, single next path, single arc to follow. This is A again and A. Oh, let me give a practical example, which you can understand better. 
this is my initial state i am going or i will go right these are two uh uh this this is basically an fst let us say this is an fsa then this is this deterministic or non deterministic this is non deterministic because when i am here i see the input i i don't know which way to go so i have to send my tokens in both the directions and finally in the next thing if i see am then this token gets rejected this path gets rejected and only this path is accepted and if i see will then this path is accepted like that so basically here i have a non determinism which way to go so whereas a deterministic fst if i say i add determinism determinization step uh, determination operation on this then i will get a deterministic i am going or Um, well cool right this is a deterministic fsa so you know determinism is very good because then uh when you are doing run, during run time of course there are some processing required you have to uh merge these two nodes etc but this is one time processing right during run time it is really fast right during preparation only you have to make some computations but at the run time it is fast fast at run time now what is minimization minimization makes it makes it more readable so consider i have some fsd like this it it has a uh, a a a this is the beginning state right this is an fsc uh, this is an fsa and what what all strings does it accept it accepts single a double a triple a four a's etc right but it is so difficult to read and whereas if i apply minimization on this and determine basically both together determine the, because this is not de non deterministic right when you see an a you don't know whether this way to go or this way to go right um so if i if you apply determinism or minim uh, plus minimization to it what you will get you will get okay uh, i have to do single transition a and then fo followed by simply this now see this is deterministic right if it sees an a it moves to this state and if it sees an a again it again moves to uh, do a self transition again sees an a it does a self transition right so this was this is deterministic as well as minimalistic and other option could have been this one i do a a and this looks like minimalistic but this is not deterministic because of this right so this is not deterministic moving it this one is deterministic as well as minimalistic so this makes it more readable okay i think we can stop here uh, thank you very much so see you uh, tomorrow and uh, as i told raj will be doing a practical demonstration of caldi and he will set up some time with you excuse me sir yeah sir um...